no problem. This is In The Kitchen News. I'm M.O. Vocals, and we're here today in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what is your name, sir? My name is Herman Perotti. All right, sir. You can find his West Ballad, G-E-R-M-A-N, in Spanish, P-A-R-O-D-I. I'm, I'm with ADAPT. You're with ADAPT? ADAPT. Now, what exactly is ADAPT? ADAPT, A-D-A-P-T, is a nationwide group of activists. All right. Around since the early 80s. We've been fighting for the rights of people with disabilities to live in the community since then, and we're not stopping. Let me just tell you that on Thursday just passed, you might have seen or heard it all over the news, yes. how over 40 people with disabilities got arrested at, said it at Majority Leader McConnell's office. You say over 40 people? Over 40 people from across the nation with disabilities, and at least 10 of them are behind me, including myself, where the police removed us forcefully from are dying on the floor out of his office. They physically removed you? Oh yes, sir. And were you having a peaceful protest? Always. We are nonviolent civil disobedient activists. Now what what what, what exactly is what 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 exactly is the the, the, the the cause that you're trying to basically come to? Like what what's the resolution of your cause? Well, let me tell you what's happening before I tell you the resolution. Okay. Right now, as many people know, the house passed a health care bill called the American Health Care Act that what? At least 23 million people like myself around the nation. You know someone would be cut without Medicaid. Medicaid helps people like myself live in the community. I need some help, some assistance, some service. And after I get that small, small service, which community services are at least three times cheaper than any nursing home. Wow. Anywhere. So in Pennsylvania alone, a nursing home costs a hundred thousand a year minimum. Yes. Community service on average costs thirty thousand dollars a year. For real? So this so the house passed a bill that would take the services of twenty three million Americans and the Senate, right? Just passed the Better Care Reconciliation Act. I don't know who they're reconciliating with besides the rich people they're giving all that money to. <laughs> that bill will literally kill millions of Americans. You're taking away the civil rights, the liberty of being able to own a house, marry, have children. We come of all walks of life. We come in all colors, in every ethnicity. Anyone can acquire a disability and then you're disabled. And in America, it wasn't too bad. In Pennsylvania, if you have a disability and you need services, three months, and so you had to wait. But that's not around the country. In places like Arkansas, a child being diagnosed with a disability, let's say autism, now has to wait seven years to receive any kind of service. Wow. Someone like myself, an acquired injury, I, got, I was shot as a car, victim of a carjacking in 2001 in Puerto Rico, but here I only had to wait, once I moved, to wait three weeks to get it back then. But imagine if you have to wait 11 years. That's how long I would have to wait in Arkansas to receive any service. 11 years? 11 years. And what do you do? Nothing. So this is so so so. It's a serious map. This is just this this is bigger than Philly. This is bigger than Pennsylvania. This is nationwide. It's a nationwide thing. And Philadelphians, at least a hundred thousand will be without community service. At least a hundred thousand. At least a hundred thousand. Think about it. That's a hundred thousand people with disabilities. Okay, maybe you're listening to this and you're not disabled, but you know someone in the healthcare field. You know a support coordinator. You know a social worker. You know someone that works in any hospital. You know, maybe you know a, a home attendant. Maybe you know, maybe you will grow old enough and have a disability yourself.
Hey, this is Castle Productions. And we're live in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, y'all, the take two. Hey, this is Castle Productions. And we're live with In the Kitchen News. Hey. Uh, this is Cassie James Holdsworth. And, and um, I've been doing this for 31 years. 31 years? Now, how are you affiliated with ADAPT? I've been in ADAPT since I was a young girl. I was wondering where a lot of my friends from special school had gone. And I found out that most of them were in nursing homes. And I was appalled, so I started taking people out of nursing homes. And through that, I met Wade Blanks, who founded a duck. Wade Blanks? Yeah, he was a gun runner for the Black Panthers, and he had been in every civil rights movement in the 60s. So he's a, he's a, he's a yeah. very known activist. And he was a reverend. And he wanted to quit because he saw people killed at Kent State. But then he went into a nursing home to work. And he saw the worst human rights violations in his life. And he got charged with working with young people with disabilities, so he took them to a Grateful Dead concert. And they fired him and threatened him. So he took a few people out, and then eventually he sued them and took all 18 of the young people out. And they were the first um, adopt people. And they took over a box and nobody would arrest them. So Wade said, well, you can steal, rape, and blunder. Do whatever you want, because we're not going to jail tonight. And they kept that bus for five days. Oh, wow. And that's how they started. And the first issue was the buses. It took them seven years to win the right to ride the bus. We've been working on Free Our People now for, um, oh my god, 20 or more years. And uh, we don't understand it, because it was our homes, not nursing homes, and people were real hot for it in the beginning, but I don't know what happened, but we knew that these people in Washington were getting meaner and meaner. I mean, you got blue dog Democrats now that are just like the GOP, they don't want to spend money. And they're rich people padding their own pockets, it doesn't matter whether they're Democrats or Republicans. Money that they already have. Yeah, and so it's been a long battle. Um, we thought we were going to win it two years before the recession hit, and then, of course, everything took a different turn. And right now, these guys want to end Medicaid. They want to get rid of the entitlement. It's always what Ryan wanted to do since he was a young kid drinking kegs and came up with the idea of getting rid of Medicaid. And um, Trump doesn't care. I mean, Trump is just a puppet for the GOP. He's a puppet for anybody who will pay him and keep him living in a happy lifestyle. Right. But my original point was our fathers fought for this money to protect their children. They knew there were disabled people. That's why Social Security and Medicaid got developed mm -hmm. under Roosevelt. But it was the unions who actually fought for that stuff oh, stop, and died for stop. it. And we pay into it. We pay into Medicaid. We pay into Medicare. All that stuff is on our paycheck. Just look. They're stealing our money. They're stealing the 1% money. The people that work jobs that can hardly pay their rent. That's who they're stealing off of. They're stealing off the very poorest people. And today I saw on the news that only 30% of the country even knows what they're doing. Only 30%? Yeah, because remember Trump promised not to hurt Medicare. There are a lot of old people, not very bright, brighter for them. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of people in rural areas voted for them. Hey, 13% of the black community voted for him, believe it or not. That's, that's like, ridiculous. Could you tell I, us how this, uh, the bill that they just passed on Thursday is going to directly affect uh, ADAPT? Oh, the Medicaid cuts will kill us. They're going to put a cap on our lives. It costs millions. Shut it off I was going to sign a bifida just to keep me alive is probably a million bucks. Can't shut it off put the clutches in. In, in the midst of our peaceful protest that we came across in Philly, we came across these three gentlemen that they were so kind enough, they, was, they just started passing out water to all the people that was in their protest and their rally. So, I mean, I just wanted to take the time to, to interview and commend these gentlemen because 
like these people, like like it's, it's, it's nobody else out here doing this, you know what I mean? And they just started off going around trying to feed the homeless, correct? Yes. And just, you know what I mean? more chips to go. All this. And where did y'all start y'all y'all journey at? Uh, we started, uh, there's a CVS about two blocks that way. Uh, we ran through about half a case of water so far. Uh, we had a little extra money in our pockets. We were a little bit more blessed than some of the folks out here. We decided to start spreading some help, start spreading some love. No reason not to, you know what I mean? This is the city of brotherly love. Brotherly love is spreading out love and care. That's what's everyone. up. Gotta show it, man. Gotta show it. That's what's up. Yeah. I mean, because the news, I mean, you turn on the news nowadays, all you see is just depressing stuff. I mean, yeah, we're trying to yeah, yeah. find stories that shed light on situations. Yeah, yeah. there's not too much I good mean, out there, but we're trying to spread it. We saw people smiling after we gave them something warm. Not, it's not, it may not be warm, but it's something to eat. It, it means a lot. It means yeah. a lot to them because they don't get the same respect as everybody else because of yeah. poverty. The poverty is just And yeah. some of these people, they're great people. It's just put in a bad situation, man. Uh, you know, if, if everybody would just take a minute to show a little bit of appreciation and show a little bit of help and love, who knows, maybe that person could get out of the deficit and the situation that they're in and they could they could grow to bigger and better things. I completely agree. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I'm, I'm here with our company's called Capsule Productions and the media... The uh, media outlet that we have with our news is called In the Kitchen News. We also have a podcast called In the Kitchen. But whenever we finish editing this, which we, we try to make it very hasty, but probably within like the next few weeks or so, we should. I mean, we'll, you can uh, you should be able to look it up. I have a business. Which way are you guys going? We're going back this way. We're going I don't know which way. We're going I'm, I'm going that way because I got to catch up with them. Okay, but yeah, uh, we'll when, when we meet up with them, I can give y'all business cards so y'all can have our contact information. We only was on this street. Second Street.